I've just finished building my American Kestrel nest box. I thought I'd build another one this year as one or two of my other ones are getting kind of old. The American Kestrel is a small falcon in North America that nests in hollow trees or nest boxes. It's the only falcon that we have that does that. So it's kind of neat to have a hawk in one of your birdhouses. Um, this, as you can see, is a fairly large birdhouse. It's modeled after a design that's common on the internet and I'll show that design at the end of the video along with uh, one other one. They're about the simplest designs I guess that you can get. This one I modified a little bit. Um, so the basic idea behind that, that general design is that you can do this box out of one piece of 1 by 10 by 8 foot long pine. So that's the nice thing, you just get one piece of that wood and you can build the whole box and have a little section left over. The only modification I made to this, to that plan, is I, instead of putting the front here on top of the sides and the sides on top of the back, I've actually put the uh, back and the front in between the sides. And the reason I did that is the original plan has a hinge on the roof to open it to clean it out and because you mount these houses at quite a height to begin with 10 feet or more it's hard to sometimes get up high enough to open the roof so I've made this design with a hinging front so I can open it at, you know two or three feet lower on the ladder which is significant when you're at those heights the roof I've also made a few adjustments because I had the back extending up like the original plan beyond the roof I actually cut the roof board with a couple notches here or I just cut a section out of the middle that would wrap around the back ideally if I was planning to do this version originally I would have just uh, cut the back off at this level and had the top go beyond it a little bit. So in this plan the backboard here is 26 inches long. The sides are uh, 17 inches tall at the back and 15 inches tall at the front. The front board is just the standard width of the 1 by 10 board which is actually about nine and a quarter and then it's 15 inches tall too. I left a little bit of a gap up here just to allow a bit of extra wind flow. Uh, the hole is important. That needs to be three inches wide. And then I use a little round file to smooth out the inside and outside edges of the hole just so that it's not a sharp edge. Inside the, inside the front I always make these grooves whether it's this house or my bluebird houses I cut grooves across the inside just to enable the young to grip on with their claws because this wood is smooth wood it's been planed on both sides uh, just enables them if they need to grab onto the sides to get up to the hole to feed when they get older you'll see the bottom too I've got five holes it doesn't have to be five holes but I put five holes in this one and then the corners I've cut off a little bit this is just to allow for any drainage that might be needed if, if, they, if there was ever a, a, a large rainfall that happened to get in the main hole. So as this box is plant shows now, you would mount it with screws through the bottom and top onto a pole or the side of a building. You don't really want to put it on a tree because predators like weasels and raccoons can more readily go up trees and uh, get into boxes. So because I, I altered this plan a bit from the original I had to use a wider board for the roof. This is actually 1 by 12 rough pine I used for the roof just to cover the greater width now that the box was since I was putting the uh, the front board and the back board in between the two sides. If I had done it like the original I wouldn't have had to have done that. I could have used a standard 1 by 10 board although it does really just come to the very edge of the um, the sides and it's actually kind of nice to have the board the roof overlap the sides a little bit like this one does the hole itself I believe is centered at 
the 12 inch um, point high off the floor. You'll also note I recessed the floor about a quarter inch from the bottom. This just allows rain to drain off from the sides and the front. Another thing I mentioned, I should mention when you put these up, you want to put maybe a couple inches of uh, shave, wood shavings in the bottom that they can sit in that and compress it with their own body and get it to a, a little bit of a shape that they like. You don't want to use wood or you don't want to use sawdust, but you want to use small wood shavings. And the ones I've found that are good are um, in pet stores. They, they will sell uh, shavings for hamsters and gerbils and things, uh, guinea pigs that are quite finely chipped into about a quarter inch segment. So when you put them in, they form a nice, they're able to be formed into a bit of a shape. So just a, a couple inches or so, an inch and a half or two inches. Make sure it's sort of packed in before you close. Try and dish it out a bit with your hands before you leave it and then uh, close the front. And uh, this one I've just pre-drilled to have a one and a three quarter inch screw go through here and hold it. All this box is put together with uh, one and three quarter inch exterior deck screws that I've pre-drilled. The pine tends to crack with screws if you don't pre-drill it. And it's just, I find the screws hold better typically than, uh, than nails do. The, sh the uh, spiral Ardox nails, they're okay, but uh, for a bigger box especially, I, I prefer screws. In the end too, I'll probably uh, paint this. Paint, you can leave it natural. Paint does provide protection for sure. If you leave it natural, it'll turn gray in about a year and then it'll, the sun's beating down and rain will tend to start creating cracking in the uh, soft pine wood. And it looks nice for a while and it, and it retains itself for a while, but eventually the cracks expand with winter fraw, uh, thawing and freezing. And the paint I find just do, does give it a few more years, I think, of uh, life for sure. Um, Another thing that you'll often see or read about is the need for a uh, need or no need for a perch. Now I've done both methods. The adults can certainly fly in here and land on this without a perch, but sometimes I have put a perch of like a one by one inch uh, roughly piece of wood here, just maybe a quarter inch below the hole. Um, and then I've had it extended out the side by about a foot and a half and actually the birds seem to like that quite a bit. You'll have the adult, one of the adults will go in and the other one often perches there just as a, uh, just for something to do. They seem to like to do, to be there. So whereas some people argue that a perch might enable predators to get in, I don't really think that's a big issue if you're already putting it on the side of a building or on a good pole. Um, and I do find that the kestrels seem to like perching out on, on that side perch. So hope you'll enjoy uh, trying to make your own kestrel nest box. I just, oh, I should have said too, the kestrels uh, are typically found in open farmland country, usually where it's not completely agricultural, but where there's hay fields and lots of nice natural fields around. So if you have land like that, or if you have relatives or friends that have land like that, maybe you can uh, find a place to put up your kestrel nest box. You're not likely going to get them right in the middle of a town or a city. Uh, so you do have to have that rural setting pretty well to have a better chance at getting them. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed that. And have some luck trying to build your own box.